My name is Jill Souza, and I am currently the Northern California Regional Director for Palliative Care Services. I originally met Suzanne, who we're going to talk to today, in a perinatal outreach program. I feel like I've made the full life cycle and starting in perinatal and now in a world of end of life. I live in Napa. My age is 52. Today's date is September 8th, 22. I'm Suzanne Scully. I live here in Napa, California. I'm 68 years old. I'm a substance use navigator at Queen of the Valley Medical Center. I'm also a perinatal counselor for the Community Health Investment Program. So Suzanne, why don't we start out by you telling us a little bit about where I first came upon you. When I walked into those county offices, I was doing perinatal outreach with young women, older women, women of all different socioeconomic backgrounds, and I came in to meet with you to see what maybe we could offer to women you were helping to serve in the community. Yes, I had just was assigned to that position and our paths cross. I was very excited about learning more and working with you. Absolutely. And then I think further down the road, Suzanne, we we crossed paths again as we opened up a program for substance abuse um, counseling within the hospital. And let's talk a little bit about what that was like. Yes. And so I think that came from a needs assessment that was done for our community. My supervisor, Carlos, at the time came to me and said, we have a position here that we would like you to fill. It's at Queen of the Valley Hospital. And I said, no, I'm not your girl. I don't like doctors. I don't like nurses. I don't like hospitals. And he said, you'll be working with Jill. And I'm like, Jill. And then you and I got together and you thought that I would be a good fit. So I found the courage. I showed up every day. People got to know me. They were so welcoming. Probably after that first year, I was so surprised that whatever anxiety or whatever concerns I had, they were all in the past now. You were so supportive. And one of the things that they said in that orientation, they spoke about a sacred encounter. And I had never heard that expression before. Throughout the years that I was working, I met so many alcoholics and addicts. If I want to meet them in a sacred encounter, I need to come to that with compassion and dignity for them. And I can't do that with judgments. We've come a long ways with talking about alcoholism and addiction from moral failings to a disease And right now, they're classifying it as a disorder. I was working with a young 20-year-old. He had come into the hospital. He originally came in as an opiate overdose. He was there for a couple of days. I had seen him twice already. And I said, oh, I'm going to go up and visit. And so when I got up there, there was nobody in his room. I asked the nurse if he had been discharged. She said, no, he's in there. I went over to the bathroom and I knocked on the bathroom and I kind of wiggled the handle and it was locked. She knocked and said, are you okay? Are you okay? The patient opened the door. And as he opened the door, the nurse and I witnessed that he had been smoking a drug in the bathroom. The nurse responded, this is not okay. Got a couple of other nurses. They began to try to secure the room, called security. I, at that moment, saw the patient who was not only under the influence, which is a compromised state, but also very scared. I said, come here, sit down on the bed. I said, you're going to be okay. Just tell me what it was that you took and if there's anything more in that bathroom. He said, there's stuff behind the toilet seat covers. I told the security. I sat with the patient. He sat down in the bed and I sat down in a chair next to him. As this was all happening, I was talking with him and saying, you haven't done anything that isn't expected of someone that's struggling with substance use disorder. You're going to be okay. I went and checked with the security guard and asked if he was going to be arrested. And they said, no, he's not going to be arrested. And I assured him, you're in the hospital and this is a safe place. After this is taken care of, you're going to continue to receive the medical attention that you need. How great that you were there and able to really de-escalate the situation and help that person feel cared for. The less judgment you have, the less shame they have. That is creating the sacred encounter. They come back and they say, you saved my life. And it's like, "Mm, I don't know that I saved your life. I think you saved your life. You're the one who actually did the work. I was the one who was with you when the conversation started. And so they'll smile and they'll say, okay, that's my job is to start that conversation. Mm -hmm.